What's going on, Falcons fans? Welcome into Falcons Today by Chat Sports. Day two of the NFL draft is here. So I thought we could go over a sort of mock draft slash just draft targets in general for Atlanta going into rounds two and three. Now, last night, the Falcons went B. John Robinson, Texas running back. And the room seems to be split. And honestly, I think both sides have fair points to make. And I've sort of played Switzerland through this pick because Bijan's going to be a really good player. But running back at eight when you had Tyler Algier, a fifth round pick, rush for a thousand yards, might not be the greatest use of a premium asset like the number eight pick in the draft. So I get both sides of the coin. Now, we're going to look at some round two and three picks for Atlanta. They are on the clock at 44 and 75. They might make some trades. Would not surprise me. The NFL draft is always fluid. So in this mock draft at pick 44 for Atlanta, I went Jalen Hyatt. Now, part of me hates this pick because they should go defense, right? You went offense in round one. The defense needs a lot of love. But I do wonder, did Arthur Blank go... Let's get fun, right? Let's get butts and seats, and let's go full offense. And that is Jalen Hyatt, right? The Belenikoff winner from last season. Here is the scouting report we have on him. Awesome combination of speed and ball skills. He's not just a track star, which I think a lot of times people see 40-yard dashes and go, oh, it will work, right? We'll figure it out. No, he is a very good route runner. He's got great ball skills. He plays bigger than his size. He won on the deep ball a lot. And so much to the point where you go, maybe it will translate to the NFL and it's not just the product of a bit of a Mickey Mouse offense as some call it down in Knoxville. Now, he doesn't have maybe the most expanding route running skills in terms of variety of types of routes he ran at Tennessee. He was a go guy. He went down the field and he beat everyone that lined up across from him. Last season for the Vols, 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns. If you manage to score five touchdowns against Nick Saban and Alabama's defense, I don't care who you are. You're going to get some attention, and you probably deserve to go round two at the very latest in the NFL draft. Now, Dane Brugler from The Athletic wrote this on Jalen Hyatt. Hyatt isn't a well-rounded receiver and won't become one overnight, but he is exceptional in two key areas, easy speed and confident ball skills. And his potential for an explosive play at any moment changes the way defenses prepare. In the right role, he can be a productive home run hitter for an NFL offense. Jalen Hyatt with Drake London and B. John Robinson, whoever the quarterback is, they're going to have a lot of success. Now, I think Jalen Hyatt is going to be a round two pick on the earlier side rather than the later side of things. And if the Falcons want to just overload on offense and shoot for 40 points a game, this is your pick. If you want to try and develop some more complimentary football, maybe you go defense. But I do wonder, with Atlanta investing so much on the defensive side and free agency, Jesse Bates, David Onyemata, Calais Campbell, Caden Ellis, the list goes on and on, trading for Jeff Okuda, do they prioritize the offense in the draft? And that's how they use their first two picks. So drop a name down below who you want the Falcons to pick. Give me your best guess of who you think Atlanta's going to pick or if you were the GM, who you would select. Give me that name down below. Rolly, before we go to the next player, let's remind everyone, by the way, of our NFL draft coverage. If you scroll all the way down, we've got a photo. There it is. So we will be live for not just day one of the NFL draft, but also days two and three. So hang out with yours truly over on our main channel for the NFL draft. Links at the bottom of the screen, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Wall-to-wall coverage for all three days of the draft. Now, in round three, I go defense, and finally, and it is safety slash corner slash nickel, do-it-all versatile DB, Sidney Brown out of Illinois. I wish Christian Gonzalez was a Falcon. Don't get me wrong. That was our sweet prince, but now he has rode off into the sunset as a New England Patriot. So Sidney Brown is the cornerback we target in day two of the draft. Here's the scouting report on the fighting Illini safety slash corner. He's a really good athlete, as our Tom Downey draft expert puts it, with a ripped frame, plenty of experience at Illinois, with six interceptions in 2022. Now, he does have a tendency to miss tackles, and he's more of a straight-line speed type of player than fluid hips. It can 
switch on a dime. But last season for the Fighting Illini, 60 tackles, 7 pass breakups, and 6 interceptions. So the instincts are there, the ball skills are there, just the athleticism is sort of what's making him a day 3 pick maybe, or a round 3 pick, then a round 2 or late round 1 pick. Now here's the write-up from Brugler on Sidney Brown. Brown needs to shore up his tackling skills and discipline for NFL box duties, but he is instinctive while playing at full speed and leaves everything he has on the field. His value for an NFL team will be a core special teamer and rotational sub package box safety. Now, I think they, uh, excuse me, Sidney Brown is going to come into the league with a blank canvas for a defensive coordinator to figure out what he's going to be. If he's truly a box safety, him and Jesse Bates could form a nice safety tandem in the future. You got Richie Grant, you have Jalen Hawkins. But on the other side, maybe you want to move him to corner, excuse me, move him to nickel. Uh, and you could put Jeff Okuda on the outside, or you can want to move Jeff Okuda to nickel. The Falcon secondary is very much up for grabs. Outside of A.J. Terrell and Jesse Bates, things could be reshuffled a little bit here. Now, as we look at the best player available, uh, best players available, according to Tom Downey, Brian Branch, he's just a great football player. I don't think he's going to get to 44. Michael Mayer, that doesn't make a ton of fit sense with Kyle Pitts. Joey Porter Jr., I'm telling you, him and A.J. Terrell, that's going to be one heck of a CB tandem. Osiris Torrance could be your new starting left guard. Going to pass on Washington just because you have Pitts. B.J. Ojolari, he's sort of a boomer bust edge rusher, but he wore the number 18, and that's a big deal for LSU. Clark Phillips, great instinct, six picks for the Utah Utes. Steve Avila, another left guard potentially for Atlanta. Drew Sanders, he has been mocked as or comp to Anthony Barr, if you remember him coming out of UCLA. He is just a very aggressive pass rushing outside linebacker. Cam Smith, DJ Turner, some more cornerbacks. Trent Simpson, if you want to try and find a middle of the defense piece, I don't think they will. They've got Michael Walker and uh, Troy Anderson. John Michael Schmitz, great center. I don't think Atlanta targets interior offensive line if it's not a guard. Keon White, he's going to be a very good corner or defensive tackle for someone. Isaiah Foskey off the edge, and then there is Josh Downs. So getting back to maybe the biggest story surrounding the Falcons right now in the NFL draft, the B. John Robinson selection. It's getting mixed reviews, and that's putting it lightly, right? The big draft experts out there are saying, or the NFL gurus, if you will, are it doesn't make sense, right? The Falcons, they invested so much in the ground game with Tyler Algier and Cordero Patterson that they turned out one of the best offensive rushing performances last season. So why are you going running back at eight? Is Cordero Patterson going to be here past 2023? Show of hands? I didn't think so. Is B. John Robinson better than Tyler Algier? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, yeah, he is. So I can see why Atlanta fell in love with the idea of getting one of the best players in this draft at number eight that hopefully can be the bell cow back for eight to nine seasons. Do they need a cornerback or an edge rusher more? Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, no one's going to argue against that. They went for the safe pick. That's all I can tell you. They went for, as I called it last night, the standing triple. Could they have gone for a home run pick? Yeah. But it very well could have been a Dansby Swanson swing and a miss strikeout. So I see both sides of the coin. I don't dislike the pick. I think I would have preferred Christian Gonzalez or, I mean, Jalen Carter was there. The football character concerns appear to be very strong for a lot of teams. Ultimately, Atlanta wanted to go the safe route and not take one of the big busts, but they also missed out on what could have been an all-time snag of the best player in the draft, I think, Jalen Carter at number eight. But B. John Robinson, you're a Falcon. I'm going to get behind this pick for Atlanta. I'm going to try and be optimistic about this offense, regardless who is quarterback for the few next seasons. Drake London, B. John Robinson, and maybe Jalen Hyatt, you will be a very productive offense, even with average quarterback play until they find their franchise quarterback for sure. That's it for today's show. We're going to see everyone later at pick 44 for Atlanta's second round selection. Make sure to subscribe so you do not miss it.